Hi, I'm Trish Bendix with the New York Times, and I'm so excited to be here with Newfest and the cast of HBO's Betty. I'm obsessed with the show. I've been a Betty stan since the beginning, and I tell everyone I know that they should watch it. So I'm so excited to be here today with some of the cast and also uh, executive producer, Aliyah Sophia Murad. So with us today, we have as Janae, Dee Dee Lovelace, and as Indigo, Ajani Russell. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Thanks Hi. <laughs> so I guess, uh, you know, the first um, thing that I want to get out of the way is, you know, filming during COVID, such a different process for you, I'm sure, in season two from season one. And also we, uh, some shows decided to pretend COVID didn't exist, but obviously the pandemic was written into this season. So can you talk, all of you talk a little bit about how you, uh, you know, how, how the season was for you uh, in terms of COVID? It certainly wasn't as much fun. I think that not being able to hug and kiss your your good friends every day is really hard. But I think when it came to even thinking about our storyline, it seemed like how could we ignore something that's so um, prevalent? It's just impacted everyone around the globe that it just felt almost odd to us to deny it, to not have it be a part of our, our dialogue. And I think because it was a part of our dialogue and it was also part of our real lives, it was probably a drag all around. <laughs> and I bet the girls wish that we just didn't have a, ever have any mass scenes at all. But yeah, it was, it was definitely a different process. You, when you collaborate with a mask in front of your face, you're definitely missing out on some of the nuances that you share with people that you emotionally exchange. But I think for the girls, it was probably a lot harder having to spend so much more time isolated from all their friends. You know, they had a really demanding schedule. And because of COVID, we were basically watching them like a hawk every day and night on their social media. And, <laughs> and, I, know, and I know as the young independent woman they are, they definitely didn't like that. Um, but we did our best and it was it was definitely a struggle at times. But I think it overall, it, it did bring us all closer in some ways. But I'll let the rest of the girls talk to it. Yeah, we definitely, like, having COVID and all of those restrictions, we had to learn how to communicate with each other better and more efficiently and learn how to really listen to each other. And as a cast, we've grown a lot since the first season. So I'm proud of us for working through a pandemic to make the second season of the show. Yeah. It was interesting. This this season was very interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody basically said it. We had to come together more. You know, that we couldn't not acknowledge that COVID was a thing, but we made the best of it. And overall, I'm really excited to say that we finished season two through it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really palpable in the first episode of season two where you're riding through the streets of New York and it's pretty empty. I mean, some part of that had to be a little bit fun, right? I mean, were there any advantages to shooting during COVID that you got into some spaces or something that you, you didn't have access to before? I mean, it was fun to it was fun to actually be around other people again. I think that was one benefit of it is that like we did actually get to hang out, which like we didn't do for months because we're all separated but it did feel like there was some safety in our bubble and that was fun. But then in terms of like shooting in the city and shooting around New York, we'd all been stuck at home for so long that like, for me, I know the first time we'd shot that scene in Soho was like the first time I've been in Soho in over a year. <laughs> yeah. So it was definitely like fun in some ways because it at least got to get out of our houses. I agree. So for season two, I'm curious about how, you know, the actors as you as individuals get to weigh in on where your character is going to go and, you know, how, you know, Crystal and Aaliyah might um, collaborate with you on that, if at all. The girls are a part of the writer's room and they all, they all have as much influence as they'd like to take on things. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'd love to hear from their perspective because I know we've all grown so much since making Skate Kitchen that, you know, making a TV show and creating story arcs is so much harder. But um, the girls do sit in on the writer's room and we do, we do probably like two weeks of rehearsals before we shoot and they basically like chop down all the stories, <laughs> what they don't <laughs> like. 
down and get the language in a place that they want. And, you know, they're very much like the, the editors of, of what actually comes on screen. Um, I'm gonna ask you, can you please repeat the question? Sure. Yeah, what's the experience like for you to come in and talk about where you want Janae to go and, or how they've already written something and you wanna weigh in and let them know how you feel about where she should be going in a given season? Um, yeah, so definitely, you know, have the space to vocalize um, how I feel like Janae has been evolving and where I think she's going and how I think her past experiences have affected her. Um, I know specifically this season, um, from last season, I really emphasized that I wanted her, I wanted to show her fun side. I wanted to show, you know, that, that youthful side that she has because she is, you know, like in her early 20s. So she shouldn't be, you know, so focused, so concentrated, so, you know, structured all the time because that's not what most people in their early 20s are doing or are acting like. Um, so I definitely emphasize that. And I think that was really achieved and it was nice that um, it was taken into consideration. So, you know, we're definitely very much heard um, in these rooms, which is nice. That's great. Yeah. Johnny, anything you want to add to that? Um, I was just going to say, I think for my character, it was the opposite of Janae. Like we, I wanted to show Indigo being more vulnerable in the second season and give her the room to really play with like high stakes and, um, her, character to realize like who she is or who she wants to be um, as a young black woman in New York. And um, of course, through it all, like the friendship dynamics and how important it was to highlight them and um, how versatile the spec like the spectrum of human emotion is with her. Yeah, definitely. I love the friendship aspect of this show. It's one of my favorite parts, especially just a bunch of women that are all so different, but all friends, all encouraging other women, and also so queer friendly, so queer, so just like, uh, you know, in the spectrum of the rainbow. And that's, um, you know, obviously being here as part of a new fest, I'd love to just touch on that and how queerness is just such an inherent part of Betty. So if any of you have any thoughts on that, I I'm curious. Well, I feel like their generation is, is just so comfortably fluid. Like, I feel like they, like I, I often joke when I talk to Shani, I was like, well, what kind of people do you like? She's like, I like people. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and like, you know, like to me, it's like, that's like the most like wild and outrageous answer. But like for her, she's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like I am attracted to human beings, like people. <laughs> and like, but that's, that's kind of what Betty's like. It's like, there's no, like everything is just so fluid. Like if you look at Nina's gang of boys, it's like most of them have nail polish on their nails and like a lot of them make out with girls and boys. Like it doesn't, like nobody, it's like, I feel like if anything, we're like, nobody cares. Like everybody yeah. should do whoever they want to do and enjoy it. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what Ajani, <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out how to point to where I am in this circle. <laughs> But that's definitely like I probably ask Ajani who she's into like once every week. I'm like, so what's up? And it's and it's just it's it's so it's so beautiful, you know. I feel like generations before them, like my generation in particular, fought so hard to like understand their identity, and their generation is just fighting so hard for people to like shut up and stop talking about it. You know, they're like, just let me live. Mm -hmm. But again, I think that like they um they live in a different we live in a freer time, you know, and it's it's so beautiful. I love seeing all the different love that we show on Betty. It makes my heart so warm and it feels so true to the girls, especially Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. She's calling you out. Just trying um, to call you out. I mean, if Bloomberg was here, she'd already, uh, the, the shade she'd be giving me, but true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we get to show love in all the different iterations that it exists in. And hopefully if we get a season three, you'll see something new. Yeah.
but yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys can't give away too many spoilers, but I guess I'll just say that I'm, the people that have seen this already have seen the first two episodes. They, they've already got a good dose of queerness from the top two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right off the bat. Um, yeah. But it also speaks to such a spectrum of different levels or like identities of queerness in the different kinds of women that you have on the show. So it's like some shows have one type, well, this is the gay person, but Betty is just like, you know, you can't even pinpoint that identity, which is so fantastic. You're not, you know, so I love that about the show. Um, so I guess I'm curious about, you know, I'm sure you guys get asked all the time about how close you are to your characters, but um, if you had to give a percentage, what would you say of like how much, you know, Dee Dee, you are Janae or Johnny, how much you are Indigo? Or she is you? Like a number? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 50%, you know, <laughs> 10%. Okay, all right. Yes. Ah, uh, it's weird, because it's like she has qualities of mine. So there are things where I'm like, oh, you know, that's pretty accurate. I can say a good 90 for that. But overall, that's kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. Um. I would want to say like maybe like thirty percent. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, could be wrong. It may be more her character than she even knows. <laughs> it could be more. But I'm not. No, but that's what. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. I I I have. I, 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 there are certain things about her where I'm like, yes, that's me. No, that's not me. So that's why yeah. it's kind of hard oh, totally to totally. pinpoint like a percentage, a number for me, because I'm not as headstrong like uh, as she is like in the first season. Like I'm not, I'm not waking up at like 10 a.m. like seeing like, go to the park right now and skateboard together. I'm like, I'm going to the park. If you guys want to come, you can come. I'll be here. Okay. And, and, I'm not that person, um, but I do like to have people around. I do like to skate together. Um, and then, you know, you'll see season two. I'm not that aggressive, like when it comes to people. <laughs> like, so I don't know. She has qualities, but I don't know. I <laughs> So I don't know how much you guys can tease about this season, but was there anything in particular that you got to do or you were excited to do that um, you know you can give us a vague answer about that you didn't get to do in season one or haven't gotten to do you know in your career thus far? Be curious. Mm. I think I got to play with the looks the most this season. Oh, for yeah. sure. In terms of hair and makeup mm. and you know, I would show up and sometimes they'd be like, okay, Johnny, how do you want Indigo to look today based yeah. on her outfit? And I'm like, well, I got some ideas. Fun. It's like, how crazy will you let me be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Johnny serves some serious looks this season. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. So, too, though. I mean, everybody looks so no. good this season. There's yeah. like really good really cute little outfit moments. I mean, we cranked I, it up. We really did. I mean, our poor styling department, we had, we had two amazing women running the helm of it. And it was definitely, it was definitely a quest. It's also just so hard to, to, to shop during COVID. Like I just felt I had so much empathy for them. Like, we were so demanding <laughs> without question. Oh my gosh. So Aliyah, I'm curious about writing this season and what you, you know, what from the beginning you wanted to make sure, oh, we have Moonbear coming in. Hi, Moonbear. Screen behind her. Hey. hey Moonbear. Oh, no. Why is it green? lagging? Oh, no. There she is. Moonbear, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. I'm just really? making sure the settings are good. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um, wow, you look so HD, Moonbear. I know, Moonbear looks As like I you should. Really better quality I'm, than all of us. I look like I'm <laughs> 1998. And I'm using a professional <laughs> camera. Oh, excuse oh, me. Is that why you were professionally late? Is that why? No, no, I never got, I was just trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I text everybody and I got all the information. Cool, cool, cool. Well, welcome, Moonbear. We would love to know what percentage Honeybear is like Moonbear. 
Ooh, maybe Ooh. right now, twenty <laughs> percent. Okay. What? <laughs> Because that's the past. Like I'm in the present right now. I Clearly, Aaliyah wants to answer this question. For all of us. <laughs> I mean, I won't, but I could. <laughs> well, we were just asking you, Aaliyah. I, I, we, I was asking you um, about how um, you wrote this season. How for each of the characters, the the storylines, and how you decided who was going to be, you know, moving oh with who they were. Well, first of all, we have an a team of amazing writers and I am merely a a portion of that team but we had we we got so lucky this year and we have like a like just an incredible group of women of color um two cool white guys but um this season was just so much fun to just play around with all the girls like you know, I feel like you you spend first season trying to establish who they are, trying to give you ground of like the world that they're going to be in. And then this season, we really got to play around. And I think with everything that's going on in the world from like COVID to BLM, we wanted to, we wanted to just show, we wanted to show these beautiful brown and black women just having fun and like, not get too caught up in like the politics of life, but still showing you real things. And I think that when it came to their storylines, you know, everyone everyone has a totally different storyline this year and very rarely do they even intersect outside of a Halloween party. But we just played around a lot. And I think you can see them all growing up and you can see them taking risks and making mistakes and learning from them, but ultimately, what you get from this season is how their bond and their friendship just keeps them stronger. Mm -hmm. So I think we just had a lot of fun. I mean, Moonbear's storylines were definitely the most fun to write in a lot because <laughs> they're so scandalous. <laughs> and, and I had so much fun picking out her love interest, interests to make that clear. She has many this year. Um, but yeah, everyone had fun. I mean, everybody has, like a fun storyline this year that's got so <laughs> I mean, except you know what, Johnny, your storyline reveals a lot about what a lot of women are going through your age right now. So I think it's actually very interesting in that way. It's interesting. But, I don't know about a fun. Fun, fun <laughs> in fun in seeing that being represented in a way that feels true. That's accurate. I like to spin things, but yes. <sighs> Definitely, it was definitely fun. And you got to wear the best outfits, like literally the best outfits. Yeah. So, so you're saying her outfits were better than mine? Oop. Um, oh, I mean. I would. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could openly just show you some nipple stickers right now to like one up you in that, but, <laughs> but no, no one can ever beat someone literally skateboarding down the street and just like. That like Grandma Sue, aka my mom, who plays Moonbear's grandmother, when she saw that, she was like, "Oh, what a beautiful yeah. little girl!" I was like, "Oh, yeah. she just, <laughs> so was so she just oh. thought she's like she's just so beautiful. Look at her and loving herself." I was like, "Yeah, that's it." Yeah, so I gotta crazy. ask you, Moonbear. I gotta find out about that uh, threesome scene and how it was to find out that you were going to be doing shooting this. And then the actual shooting of it. Oh, wow. I was like, ooh, this is going to be crazy. And then, like, when we had to shoot it, we had to block it out, which it was kind of weird. We had to do exercises, like, with just touching, like, the the body parts of everyone that were allowed to touch. Ooh. And and also, like, just, I don't know, it was weird, like, being kind of, um, it was like, what, what would you call it, Aaliyah? Where it's like we were blocking it out and like oh we had God, to go I'm like. I'm trying to think of her name because we had an amazing like. No, not Michelle. No, not Michelle. Her name is. Um... Alicia. Alicia. Yeah. But yeah, she's Alicia. an intimacy coordinator, which every yeah. single show should 100% have because it is so incredibly important for like everyone's comfort and most of all safety that like Alicia was like a goddess. Like she help block out all of our sexy scenes. And she just allowed them to like create a space to feeling comfortable and like made it feel organic and fluid. And I think it really helped like open people up and 
it's just, it's amazing. Like her work is so interesting and she'd always have funny anecdotes to tell us too. So that was always amazing. <laughs> She's like, I was just doing a threesome in a ditch for this other show. It's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately, like that's what she was doing for like several hours before she came to our set and it's like you're a superhero in my eyes <laughs> wow i love that um so was there anything that you any of you were nervous uh, to do um i guess maybe the threesome would count as that for you Mumbai, but anything else that was like uh am i really gonna have to do this this season some of those might be spoilers Oh, okay, yeah. you're, you're right, you're right. Some people I know have certain scenes that they would have rather not have done, and we definitely had a body double to help us do them, but. <laughs> okay, you're right, probably too spoilery. There's some, but... there, were some scene, there were some scenes that I feel like it's challenging. Like That's why I think it's so important to have an intimacy coordinator so that everybody's rights are so clearly made apparent and um, they all, I mean, all, everybody, it's a sexy season this year. So everybody on this screen has had a touch of some sexiness that I'm sure in some moments might have made them a little uncomfortable. But every single woman on the screen definitely had a sexy moment this season. Okay. I'm wondering what, um, when you hear from fans, what they most want to talk to you about or might ask you about or bring up if there's a certain scene or a line from the show that they really like. You from, from season person? one? Yeah, yeah, from what they've seen. Um, <laughs> people they are, like, oops, who's going? Go, go, Moon Bear. Um, they like that Ash and Honey, they want Ash and Honey Bear to still be a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Everybody always tells me that they cried when they saw Moon Bear dancing on the top of uh, that rooftop. And I was like, she cried making that scene. So oh, that was beautiful. Oh, wow. So true. Um, I feel like for me, everybody just talks about Kurt and Nina and how she's so funny and how they just want to see more of her, which is true. I mean, she's hilarious. <laughs> it's funny. For me, I feel like a lot of people always ask me like, is is Camille gay? Is Rochelle gay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one question. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta ask her yourself. I can't tell you that. Oh my god. <laughs> they just want to know. They want to slide in her DMs. Oh my yeah, god. I'm like, oh, it's none of my business. <laughs> All it started stuff. with the short film, though. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Was... I feel like she's been a, oh. a gay icon since the start. Right. I mean, that's kind of a stereotype a little bit about, you know, like women that do things like skateboard that are like traditionally like men's, you know, things. So I, I am curious about like how you think that the perception of women skateboarders, queer skateboarders has changed because of Betty and Skate Kitchen and the presence and the visibility that's had. I see way more women skateboarding for sure. I see way more girls on boards. Mm -hmm. And I see it in popular culture all the time too, in ways that it never was before. Mm -hmm. I feel like all I do is get people asking for skateboarding girls for fashion films and just everything under the sun. But what do you um, think? I like that, you know, I think slowly people are coming to understand that not every girl that skateboards is like a tomboy or like a whatever, you know, they're just enjoying themselves and we're just all skateboarding, you know? So I think that's kind of registering slowly but surely. Yeah. One of the things that I enjoyed about this uh, first couple of episodes was uh, the idea of Rochelle being, um, uh, becoming like a brand ambassador, an unofficial brand ambassador. Uh, and I can only imagine that that kind of stuff happens all the time for, you know, some, when you're a women's skateboarder that, you know, some sort of brand or, you know, business wants to like monopolize you as women and do something that might be, you know, prove that they're not really in the right space with it or they definitely don't have the aesthetic nailed that would be desirable. So I'm curious, like, have you guys experienced anything like that? Have you had some uh, or seen that, I guess, in the community? Does this come out of something that really happens where women are then given these Saudi outfits to record a free video, you know, to promote for a brand or something. 
Yeah, I feel like that actually really did happen to Rochelle. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what brand it was, but I definitely remember receiving oh, something I, you didn't want. I, did <laughs> like, like you. I remember, yeah. Um, but, it did happen. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I feel like it happens to them in so many different iterations, like not even yeah. thought of those, but just like random people wanting them to plug them and like them <laughs> off them like random things in exchange. And you're like, why would they even want that? But okay. You know, like that's just like a part of all of these girls like becoming these like icons of skateboarding and they're all beautiful. So of course people are like, I wonder what they could sell for me. <laughs> so it just happens quite often. I mean, in some regards you get to model for Rihanna, you know, and sometimes you get a shitty skate brand that wants you to put on a thoughty outfit, you know? <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So in different ways. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I thought that I loved that aspect of the season. And I also loved, um, I love the moon bear in the sex shop. Um, moon bear, what was it like to uh, experience that on camera? That was such a fun scene. Um, you know, I thought it would be more awkward, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> the moon bear response. It's just because like, I think at first, we were doing the lines and then the scene was kind of extended and Crystal was just like, okay. So she told us like what to do, like in a more vague sense. And then she just like filmed us like going around the shop. And I think that was good for like how it would not like actually be if we were actually in the shop together. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it flows awesome. more. Also Jeffrey is the amazing sales person in the sex shop who we love so much. He's like, I mean, he's in several scenes in the show because we just adore him. But I, I love that scene. It's so funny. It was so good. Um, so I think we only have time for this last question. So um, I would just love to know, you know, anything again, without any spoilers, you know, maybe there's something that you could just share a little bit about that you are, you think people should be excited about for season two. Mm. Ooh, I think they should be excited about um, Camille's transformations. Oh. Oh, more like Indigo's transformations. Indigo gets into some trouble this season. But oh, this is pretty also, spicy. Yeah, I mean, but also Janae has like a super hot love interest. It's <laughs> Yeah. And so, so does, so does Kurt. So does Kurt. Kurt. Yeah, everybody's got some like hot sex lives this year. So you're gonna see yeah. these girls get laid and <coughs> get minus Indigo Halloween <laughs> costumes. Indigo doesn't get laid, but she definitely lays other people out in other ways. <laughs> is is a definitely fun season for True. sure. I'm curious, the last question, do you have any choice in your love interest? Do you ever get any, you know, yay or nay uh, when they cast these people or are oh, you guys please, <laughs> don't even ask them that question. Yes, they have choices in their love interest. Yes, finding their love interest is exhausting and horrible. Don't even <laughs> answer the question. All of them weigh in on it. The only person that's chill about it is actually Dee Dee. Dee Dee's pretty chill. The rest of them are not. <laughs> well, when I get a love interest, we'll see. Moonbear is not Moonbear is not chill at all. Finding Moonbear's love interest is like going to jail. I couldn't even. I hated it. She's so we did it. You nailed it. You nailed it. You know. So you nailed it. Oh, great. I mean, she's some hot love interest this year. Amazing. Well, thank you all so much. I love Betty, and I know everyone that watches this does too. So everyone, tell your friends to watch Betty if they don't already. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye.